My name is Dr. Reniker. I am the co-founder of XNERV. At XNERV, we're developing the next generation solution for treating obstructive sleep apnea. So what is obstructive sleep apnea? It is a cessation of breathing that is caused by the soft tissue and tongue relaxing when you fall asleep. It falls backwards, blocking the airway. At XNERV, we're focused on treating moderate to severe OSA, which means patients stop breathing greater than 15 times per hour. Beyond poor quality of sleep, OSA untreated is a serious health concern. It increases your risk of mortality and can result in a two times increase of having a stroke, a five times increased risk of having a heart attack. OSA is also an independent risk factor for hypertension and type two diabetes. OSA is a severe condition that should be treated. So how common is OSA? Well, over 60 million patients in the US and EU have moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea and it needs treated today. What are the established treatment options? Continuous positive airway pressure uses pressurized air to force open the airway. These devices are uncomfortable to wear, cause nasal congestion and infections. CPAP is the gold standard for treating obstructive sleep apnea, but patients stop using it 30 to 60% of the time within a year. The mandibular advanced devices force the lower jaw forward to open up the airway. These devices can result in jaw pain, teeth displacement, nerve damage, and fractures. The third option that's available is invasive surgery to remove the soft tissue from the back of the throat. These procedures are painful, irreversible, and have long recovery times. They also have a low success rate. Many patients refuse these treatment options or stop using them altogether. The fourth and newest treatment is hypoglossal nerve stimulation. Well, hypoglossal nerve innervates the tongue, and when you electrically activate it, it causes the tongue to move forward to open up the airway. In 2014, Inspire Medical received FDA approval for the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. They showed that hypoglossal nerve stimulation is a safe and effective treatment for OSA. They currently have reimbursement strategies set up with CPT codes. Inspire Medical today is worth $3.2 billion on the New York Stock Exchange. Hypoglossal nerve stimulation is the best option for patients refusing to use their CPAP machines. So what's the total addressable market for hypoglossal nerve stimulation? Well, 2 million patients each year are prescribed a CPAP machine. Of those, approximately 50% stop using those machines. And then according to Inspire's data, about 70% of those patients are viable candidates. That means 700,000 patients each year in the U.S. are viable candidates for hypoglossal nerve stimulation. At a reimbursement rate of $20,000 per implant, that's a $14 billion per year market in the U.S. alone. At XNERV, we're developing the next generation solution for obstructive sleep apnea. We call our device the Revive System. It is the smallest type of glossal nerve stimulation on the market or in development. It is 60 times smaller than the Inspire device. Our device has three FDA approved IDEs for other indications, has a low cost of goods, Bluetooth connected, it has no battery and it has no leads. We're also developing a consumer level peripheral. This device uses RF power to empower the implantable devices. It can independently control the left and right side of the tongue. It's comfortable to wear and it monitors efficacy and compliance. So why would the patient select XNERV over the Inspire device? Well, the Inspire device is 60 times larger. The Inspire device has two leads that tunnel from the ribs up to the battery and from the battery to the neck. 20% of the time, those leads will fail within five years requiring additional surgery. Our device, the Revive system, has no battery. The Inspire device has a battery that needs to be replaced every five to seven years. Our device, the Revive system, is compatible with all standard MRI scanners. Patients and doctors can monitor efficacy real time with the Revive system. So why does the hospital select XNERV? The Inspired device takes three hours to implant. The XNERV device takes one hour to implant. And the hospital gets reimbursed $4,300 per surgery, irrespective of which device is implanted. Why do the doctors select XNERV? Well, XNERV is a better solution for the patient, and it takes one third of the time to implant. What's our schedule of activities? We expect to have FDA approval for our first phase one trial in 18 months from the time of our uh, funding. After that, we expect it to take us 12 months to complete that trial, at which time we'll start the pivotal trial. We expect to have FDA approval for a pre-market application by second quarter of 2025. What's the opportunity? It's a $14 billion market in the U.S. alone. There's only one competitor in the market. Xnerv offers a better solution than the competition. It's a low-risk investment. We've used $8 million in non-looting funding to get to this point. There's well-established reimbursement. And finally, our team has over 100 years of experience in the neuromodulation space. We've developed startup companies as well as run uh, well-established medical device companies. Thank you for your time. 
Thanks, Rob. Judges, any questions? You know, beyond uh, obviously all of the, the the advantages that you're you're proposing on, you know, uh, decreased you know time for surgery, no battery, longer lasting. Uh, on the efficacy side of things, can you just elaborate more on kind of evidence to date based on how it works that that you you know don't anticipate in compromising? Yeah. Efficacy? So all you're doing is activating a nerve to move the muscle to pull the tongue forward, the hypoglossal nerve. Um, in our animal studies that we've done to date, um, you activate no problem. The device is, you know, it's, it's a tiny little device, but it can be powered from up to four centimeters away and plus or minus 40 degrees. So efficacy should not be an issue. In our six month dog study, we saw very little encapsulation and we were able to recruit the nerves uh, easily at six months. Our compliance voltage was about three volts. The system can be do up to 12. So we do not anticipate any issues with uh, being able to recruit those muscles. Hi, I had two questions actually about your go-to-market uh, strategy. Sure. Um, the, first, the first was around, uh, I think you're gonna go to market to outpatient hospitals, um, but with over 6,000 hospitals in the US and without an extensive sales force, how do you plan to go to market uh, with hospitals and outpatient centers? Yeah, that's gonna be the, the last one of the big rounds after the A and B rounds, you're gonna have to raise a C round to hire that sales force to push this out. So, um, you know, the medical device field, that's just, typically how it's done. So you, you would ramp up if, if you looked at our financial projections, you know, you're going you're gonna to go to 20, $30 million a year sales force pretty quickly. Um, so New Vectra and a couple other companies that spun out recently saw the same thing and you just got to ramp up quickly. And then you share the incentive for the doctor. Um, but what is the, how do you make your device accessible? Because what is the incentive for the insurance companies to switch over from uh, partnering with Inspire Medical to your device? So like I said, the Inspire device, the, the issues with it is it, it will re require additional surgeries. Every five to seven years, you're going to have to have a surgery to replace the battery. That will be expensive and the insurance companies will have to cover that. If the leads break, you know, 20% of the time, every you know five years, you've got two leads. So you're going to probably have surgery every two and a half, three years to replace a lead. It's going to get expensive quickly for the insurance company because our device is glass encapsulated, has no leads, no battery. It, it, it never needs to be replaced. Our uh, accelerated age testing suggests the last 25 years without any issues. Um, so for the insurance companies, I, it would be difficult for them not to uh, see the benefit of our device. Yeah, thanks Rob. You're welcome. Just a quick question around IP. Have you guys filed any patents on, uh, on the device and what is those capture? Yeah, so there, we've got IP that's, in, that's being per persecuted for OS specifically. Um, we're doing an FTO right now as well as putting stakes in the ground around the openings that are available to us. Um, there is some IP on the implant device itself, um, but the, the, you know, the technology tip is, you know, 50 years old or so, 40 years old for IPGs. And so it really comes down to, um, you know, strategizing to protect the OSA market, not the device itself per se. The clinical plan, uh, do you plan on on having a control arm with, uh, you know, to show like non inferiority to the Inspire device, or just go? Uh, no, I mean, so, well, so when we've discussed this, the, the way Inspire did their their clinical trial was they waited till uh, six months because you don't they did they had to try to titrate up slowly to get efficacy because the patient couldn't um, take the the current levels that required to move the tongue. So we've got a strategy there that we think we can get faster. But at the end of that that period, they then, all the people that were responders, those are the ones that they, they went and looked at. Um, so they had a, their, their um, clinical plan was a little bit uh, advanced for the time. Um, whereas App, uh, Appnex failed their clinical trial because they include everybody. Um, so ours, we will have a, a, a sham arm, but it will probably with, be within person because we can, with our device, we can turn it on sham mode without the patient knowing. So we can do a double blind randomized placebo controlled. And because we're monitoring efficacy real time at night, we can actually have it on one night and off another night. So we're still discussing what that clinical trial will look like, but it will probably be with an in-subject um, control arm that we'll be using, which is not an arm, but within uh, subject controls. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. We really appreciate it. Great job today. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Steve Genrich, Associate VP of Innovation and Commercialization for the Office of Research at UT Dallas. As Dr. Joe Pancrazio mentioned to you earlier, we are excited to bring the research commercialization track to the Big Idea competition this year 
and further support advancing research from the bench to the marketplace. You have witnessed, as everyone has, three incredible teams who presented their groundbreaking projects today. But in the spirit of competition, there can only be one winner. The judges have made their decision and the winner of the Big Idea Competition 2020 Research Commercialization track is... Xnerve. Congratulations to the Xnerve team. Very, very cool technology. Thank you so much.